But Mark, let's wrap up the podcast like we always do. Our last, our last regular season picks for the year of our I'm Lord, gonna miss it. 2017. I'm going to miss it. This is actually the last segment that we're going to have. Well, if you're on YouTube, it's not the last segment of 2017. But if you're listening to straight through the if podcast. If you're listening straight through the podcast, this is the last thing you will hear from the onside kick in 2017. So this is, we got to make it good. This yeah. is the very end. The no, regular season's over. No Sunday night game. However, like me and you talked about in between segments is basically you're not going to have a Sunday night game on New Year's because advertisers aren't going to want to advertise that yeah, game. Yeah, no, people aren't going to watch it. They're going to parties. Exactly. They're going to be there watching New Year's Rockin' Eve. Yep. On, I We're going to see Mariah Carey fuck it up again. Uh, like Brandon said, just stick to all I want for Christmas. I think that's what he said. Stick to all I want for Christmas and then get on. Which my thought was, why would you sing that after Christmas? But that's a total topic for another day. Let's make our picks. And we're going to start. We're a table divided. Yeah. The Bears, the Vikings. My Vikings cannot get home field advantage. I'm sad because the road to the Super Bowl does not go through Minnesota. I hope the Eagles lose in the divisional round. 11 and a half point favorites. Who you got, Bears or Vikings? The Bears. Skull. I just think, A you table know. divided. <laughs> Mitch is going to light it up. He's going to throw 500 yards and 10 touchdowns. <laughs> I think that this is one where it gets out of hand and Teddy gets in there for the last regular season game of the year. Vikings win big. Then we've got another. Out of hand because Mitch threw for 500 yeah. yards and 10 touchdowns. <laughs> he threw for 500 yards and 10 touchdowns. <laughs> but we got another NFC North uh-huh. battle. All divisional matchups yeah. in this last week. The Packers, Brett Hundley. Should the Packers release Aaron Rodgers? Story for a different day. They're going to be in Ford Field. Maybe. The new team for John Gruden, a Lions fan, friend of the show, uh, told us that apparently the Lions are pursuing John Gruden. Everybody's pursuing John Gruden, right? The Lions are a six and a half point favorite. Who you got? Pack Lions. Um, I guess I'm gonna pick the the Detroit Lions. Yeah, that's I mean, what I'm gonna go with none of this really matters. Detroit's out of the playoff rates anymore. Are they? Th- yeah, they're I gone. don't think they are they're completely. Out. They're out. I are they? They are out. There's no way for them to get in. Okay, because the one thing I was looking at in the NFC was you've got Atlanta and Seattle could both lose. Then they would be tied with Detroit. I don't know how the tiebreaker is with Detroit and those two teams. But I'm going to go with the Lions to win this one mainly because, yeah, they would be out because they'd lose the tiebreaker to the Falcons. They lost that game earlier in the year. Still think they're going to win because Brett Hundley is not the same as Aaron Rodgers. Then another meaningless game, unless it's draft you're talking about. Mainly, it's not the Texans you're concerned about. It's the Browns you're concerned about. Yeah. This has draft implications as we've got the Texans and the Colts. Who are you going with? I'm going to go with the Houston Texans. And on the this line one. is Colts three and a half, by the way. I'm going Houston Texans. Anytime I pick the Colts, mm-hmm. they lose. So, I mean, there's no reason to do that. Um, no, I, I just kind of. I want. To, I'm gonna go with Houston. I don't think that the Browns managed to get pick number one and pick mm-hmm. number three. Um, that's just too wonderful for them. So I don't. I don't see it happening. Well, and I look at that, and even if they did tie, the Colts would still be the higher pick as they've got the lower strength of schedule. I'm the gonna Colts go ahead. To go. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the Colts as well. I just think the Texans are not that good at the end of the year, and I mean next year you get Deshaun Watson back. You'll be in better shape, but this was just not the season you expected from the Texans. Yeah. Then we move on AFC East. We've got the Jets. We've got the Patriots. James Harrison going to play in this one. They suspect Patriots win their fifteen and a half point favorites. That's who I'm going with. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, it doesn't matter if Harrison plays or not. No, Tom Brady wants to win. He's going to win, and the Patriots will get home field advantage throughout. Then we're moving on NFC East matchup. We've got the Redskins. We've got the Giants. Kirk Cousins, could this be his last game in a Redskin uniform? They're three and a half, they're three point favorites mm-hmm. over the G Men. Yeah, Kirk Cousins needs to go out there and, and you know get that contract, that big mm-hmm. contract. He's gonna go out there. I think he's gonna have a big game uh against New York's Giants defense, which isn't that great. Um so I think he'll go out there and he'll he'll impress people and show why he deserves the big money. Now here's the interesting thing. I'm going with the Giants in this one. I think Eli will be able to get it done. However, Interesting thing about the Giants, you hear what Landon Collins 
said this about week Eli about Apple? Eli Apple, that he's basically a cancer. And Eli Apple's not playing. No, he's not. The thing that I was going to say is more interesting, if the Texans and the Giants both win, mm-hmm. the Colts will then move up into the second overall pick, I believe. Mm-hmm. Good for because them. both the Giants and the Colts will be three and tw- are three and thirteen, and then the Colts have the lower strength of schedule, so the Colts could be the second pick overall with a loss this upcoming week and a giant win. Then let's move on. We've got the other AFC match, AFC East matchup: the Cowboys and the Eagles. It, Originally, I was like, you know, I don't want the Eagles to lose, but they won against the... I don't know how you let them win if you're Oakland, but I think the Eagles win this one. The Cowboys got nothing to play for, except for beating a rival. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they want to beat the rival, but Mm -hmm. it's at Philadelphia. I mean, that's going to be a a big... um, You know, that's going to shift the momentum Mm -hmm. towards Philly in Week 17, for sure. Most important game coming up. And by the way, that was a Dallas is the favorite by three in that one. The most important game of the week is the one happening in Pittsburgh. The 0-15 Browns, the 12-3 Steelers. Yep. Steelers are 11-point favorites. Do the Browns get their first win, or do we see 0-16 for the second time ever since 2008? Ever. Yeah. Um, you and know, we I, almost saw I gotta it, keep writing. And we almost saw it in 2007, but the Dolphins went 1-15. I got to keep writing here and say that uh, Cleveland's going to win a game because I've been saying it for weeks. Going to pick Cleveland because 1-15 sounds a whole lot better than 0-16. We're going to see it, folks. We are going to see 0-16. Again, I think the Steelers win this one, and the Browns finish 0 and 16 officially. Yeah. the top team. Fun in fact: the, draft. the last time okay. a team went 0 and 16, the Packers did not make the playoffs, and that happened this year. Wow! So the yeah. Packers just—I mean—and the Packers aren't in the playoffs. Someone's going 0 and 16. Well, and the more interesting thing—I don't know if this is going to ring true—but mm-hmm. the last team to go, and I know there's only been one last team to go 0 and 16. That next draft. Drafted their quarterback of the future number one overall and became a playoff team. So if you're Browns fans, yeah. that's something to hang your hat on. I mean, you're not going to win a Super Bowl. But no, 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 no. Get, but you can you be get, you in a playoff playoffs. contention. You can make a yeah. playoff game. That's okay. Playoffs? We're talking playoffs? Yeah, playoffs, playoffs are nice. I mean, you'd rather win a Super Bowl, but playoffs yeah, are nice. Tomato, tomato. But moving on, to the, than 0 and moving on to the NFC South, we've got, to me, the most meaningful game as not, not just playoffs on the line, but... The Panthers could move up in seeding. We've got the Panthers, the Falcons, Falcons three and a half point favorites. I'm going to go with the Falcons to get the win over the Panthers and solidify themselves as the sixth seed. Playing right now would be the Rams in the wild card round. Yeah, the Atlanta Falcons control their destiny here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think otherwise you let the being, Seahawks yeah. sneak in. Being that home team, I think is that. Extra motivating thing that'll get them past Carolina. Mm-hmm. I think they just have a little bit more to play for. It really does remind me of Chicago Green Bay. Mm-hmm. You know, um, when Chicago was already in, they didn't have anything to really play mm-hmm. for, so they didn't. And it became pretty obvious that they didn't when Green Bay was able to kind of roll over them. Um, I expect something similar to that. I wouldn't be surprised if Carolina, at a certain point in the game, says, We don't need this. We're going to bench the starters. And moving on, AFC West matchup, 9-6 and six Chiefs, 5-10 and 10 Broncos. Surprisingly, the Broncos are three-and-a-half-point favorites in Denver. I think that's ludicrous. I'm going with the Chiefs to win well, this one. Hashtag Chiefs Kingdom. Mahomes is playing, so maybe that has something uh, to do maybe, with it. Maybe, maybe, but I'm still going with the I'm Chiefs. I'm going to go with Mahomes the Mahomes is going to get three touchdowns in this one. I'm calling it. I'll go with the rookie. I think it's going to be very interesting to see him play. He's playing I to went, hopefully win a job next I year. I went to hit the button, but I'm like, it's not an upset, and that's why I awkwardly pointed at the camera. Good. Just so you guys know, I went to hit the button, but I was like, no, it's not. I mean, it is an upset, but it's wrong podcast Barely. for that, but... Hashtag Chief Kingdom, you're going to win the game. Then to me, what could have been a meaningful game, but for the Titans, it's basically make the playoffs and the Jaguars are basically, you're not fighting for a first round bye anymore. Jaguars are three point underdogs to the Titans. Who do you got in Nashville, the Jags or the Titans? I'll take the Titans because mm-hmm. they need the playoff spot. Okay. Um, I, I do think Jacksonville is going to be a little angry mm-hmm. over their loss, uh, but at the same time, that loss to the San Francisco 49ers could be a little bit of a start of the downfall. 
you know, they could back their way into the playoffs, which is a dangerous thing to do. Uh, and it's a team that isn't used to this kind of success. Mm. So it's a little dangerous right here. I think the Tennessee Titans get this win. Last week, I picked against the Jaguars. Jaguar fans were like, you're wrong. You don't pick against Jimmy G. That's what we learned. However, Jimmy G's not out there today. I think this is another game where last year in this one, Marcus Mariota went down with the knee injury yep. that we saw and questioned coming into the season. I think Jaguars get the win in Nashville, and they will go to 11-5. and five. The Titans keep that loss. Remember that in the memory banks because that's going to play – later in these picks for me. But coming up next, we've got said Jimmy G going up against the Rams who have already said they might sit their starters this weekend when the Rams play the Niners. The Niners are three-point favorites. Who do you got? Jimmy G to go undefeated or the backup Rams to get the win? Yeah, I'm going to go with Jimmy G being undefeated. I mean, there's no reason to pick against them, especially with the Rams saying, yeah, we don't even think we're even going to bother playing Mm -hmm. our starters. Yeah, without a doubt, I'm going with the 49ers. I can't pick until, like I said, until he loses, I cannot pick against Garoppolo. I'm going with the 49ers to beat the Rams, although Ram fans are going to go asterisk, technicality, a win's a win at the end of the day. Yep. Then we've got the Bills, Bills Mafia, going up against the Dolphins. Bills are two-and-a-half-point favorites. However, could this be a prime upset game for the Dolphins to beat the Bills? Uh, I actually am going to pick the Dolphins on this one. I think Jay Cutler gets that one last win. Smoke and Jay. uh, And then he checks out of his hotel room (laughs) and goes back home. Um, I thought that was a hilarious fact that I I learned today. Is What, that that he never bought a house? He just lives in a hotel room? He didn't bother with a house, didn't bother with an apartment, just said, I'll take the hotel room. It's nice. He's got enough money. Yeah, I mean, Him him and his wife have enough money. The man got a $100 million contract, so Uh I think he's all right. Yeah, he can use some of that for that hotel and he doesn't have to uh, make his bed each day. He can just let yep. housekeeping you go. You got a pool. You got a hot <laughs> tub. You know, you, they'll do your laundry for what you. Do you. What do you think, like, throughout the entire season, like, do you think there are people that were like, is that Jay Culler? Is, is that Jay Culler in the room next to me? No, because he was up, like, in the penthouse. You oh, know? He okay. was getting top I was, quality. I was going to say, you don't think he was stopped in the lobby of the hotel, like, Hey, Jay Cutler, can I get an autograph? Hey, Jay Cutler, can I get my picture taken? I'm sure he probably was, but I mean, I'm also, the man's used to it. I'm sure he didn't really leave the the penthouse that often. I'm thinking man of the people, Mark, like a normal simpleton room like you and I would get at the Holiday Inn. That's what I'm thinking. No, Jay and Kristen Cavalier uh, are not staying in, (laughs) you know, room 207. That's what I'm thinking. (laughs) I'm thinking man of the people, Jay Cutler, when it comes to that. I'm going to pick the Bills. It's not going to matter, though. However, it's not because of the next game. Raiders and the Chargers. And I am wearing a Raiders-themed shirt. However, I am going with the favorite here, seven and a half points, going with the Chargers. And just like I said, that Titan loss is going to play into it because it doesn't matter that the Bills won. The Chargers won, and the Chargers are a playoff team over yeah. the Titans and over the Bills. Yeah, I'm taking the Chargers, too. I like what they've been doing this season. You know, even though I had Oakland going far at, at mm-hmm. the very beginning, um, and they still have a chance, but, yeah, no, I'm going with the Chargers to get the win. Then in the next game, we've got the Cardinals and the Seahawks. Bruce Arians, we said it earlier in the podcast, he said, I'm going to take from Monday all the way until February to kind of decide what I'm going to do with my future. Who are you going with, the underdog Cardinal? The favorites by nine and a half points, the Seahawks. I'm going to take the Seahawks here because they're fighting for the playoffs. I okay. don't think they're getting in because I think the Falcons are going to win. Yeah. Uh, but this is one of those things. Games are happening at the same time. They're not going to know what's going on. You know, players are going to be paying attention to that scoreboard, I'm sure. Uh, someone's going to have an idea what's happening on the other, you know, the other side of the world I over mean, there. But they'll... They'll be playing hard, and I think Seattle wins. I'm going to go with the Seahawks as well because it ain't going to matter because just like you, I had the Falcons winning, so it ain't going to matter come playoffs. Then the last two, the NFC game, we've got the Saints, the Buccaneers. Saints are a touchdown favorite. Do the Bucs stand any chance of winning? I mean, no. a- apparently uh, Coach Cotter said that, hey, you know what, That I, I still have control of this locker room. When you have to make sure that quote, yeah. that usually means, hey, could you be canned? on Black Monday, which would be hilarious because he's the guy that they're like, he's going to work with Jameis Winston and fired 
and Lovey it hasn't, Smith for. It hasn't, it hasn't worked. worked out. Well, Fire and Lovey Smith is all right. That was fine. It's um, okay. Now we got him in Illinois, and I'm not exactly well, as happy anymore. I told you. I told you <laughs> it wouldn't be. But it was also okay because he was a defensive-minded coach yeah. who let the defense get even worse, mm-hmm. um, which was the strong point. I'm yep. taking the Saints on this one. No reason to think the Bucks are going to get the win. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Saints as well. It's not going to matter much for the Saints. Maybe, maybe they move up. In the playoff like seeding, because with the Ram loss, yeah, they would move up in the playoff seeding by one game. So it'd be Falcons Saints again for the third time if the Rams lose and the Saints win. And then our last game, Bengals going up against the Ravens. Coach John Harbaugh not happy with the game time change from one o'clock central to or the one o'clock to the four um twenty five Eastern start. However, that's when they're going to play the game. Ravens, nine-and-a-half-point favorites. They need the win to make the playoffs. I think they will win, although if they lost, they would still make the playoffs in my mind. They get the win over the Bengals. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any reason to think that Cincinnati Bengals beat the the Ravens. I mean, it was the first game of the season, but they mm-hmm. were shut out by the Ravens before. Um, I honestly don't think much is different. Baltimore's playing for this playoff spot. They're going to get it. And... From what our picks would be, I don't know if you kept track, but I was keeping track in my mind. My playoffs, this is my prediction for the playoffs based on my picks this week. Yeah. In the AFC, we've got Patriots number one, Steelers number two, Jags stay at three, Chiefs stay at four, Ravens at five, Chargers at six, and then in the NFC, Eagles and Vikings won two, the Saints are three, the Rams are four, Panthers are five, Falcons are six. I didn't pay enough attention to pull that off, so. That's what I did. Comment section, you can feel free to go back and check. Got a little bit extra for you. That's what I'm going to do. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know who you got going where, who you got making the playoffs, who you got not making the playoffs. And let us know what you thought about anything else we talked about today on the podcast. A little bit of housekeeping, though, before we officially wrap it up. Number one, if you want to be like Christian, who was on the podcast earlier, Make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. If you are at the $10 tier, every month you are at that tier, you can join one of the podcasts here on MVP to talk about whatever topic you would like. Number two, we're selling MVP shirts. They are in the description. You can figure out how to exactly get it. You send us an email. We send you an invoice through Square. That's how you pay for it. And then we can get you an MVP t-shirt. And last but not least, if you're on iTunes, You have an iTunes account, go ahead, give us a five-star rating on iTunes, and then please do the same for the Primetime Podcast, the Fast Break, and the Rick and Johnny Podcast. I want to thank you guys for either watching on YouTube or listening on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, or MostValuablePodcast.com. Thank you guys so much, and as always, have a good day, everybody.